Welcome to anyone watching. What this video shows is a DV ADR, which is uh, the recording unit from the A10C. It's located at the top of the left console, just above the emergency wheel brake. This is to use with Digital Combat Simulator. And this has two main differences to the other panels I've built. The first is that I've looked to implement the protectors that you can see in either side of the toggles. And the, as opposed to a panel, this is more a unit in that it comes in its own enclosure. The main output cable that you can see here is what allows me to interface this unit as a module. And you can see that I'm testing the backlighter now of just a, a basic 9 volt circuit, just temporarily uh, using a battery before it will go to the mains. And the rest is via uh, a keystone jack, so that will allow an Ethernet cable to, to be used, as you can see now. The Ethernet cable is the means by which we'll connect the unit to the Adreno. And what we're looking at now is the input wire created again using a keystone jack which then has a terminated end as a pin header it will plug into and that will let me connect that straight to the Adreno. In this case I'm using an Adreno Mega and I'm using DCS BIOS. So as always uh, a big shout out and a thank you to FSFE and the uh, creator of DCS BIOS. DCS BIOS in this case has handled the two outputs of the two LEDs and the two inputs of the two toggles. So if we put it together now and then we'll give it a test. So we're now connecting the input wire into the Adreno Mega and obviously just grounding it. With that now set up as a mini hub we can take the Ethernet cable and connect that to the first keystone jack and we then use the other end of the Ethernet cable to connect to the keystone jack of the output cable for the actual unit that we've built and then all we need to do is execute the SOCAT file which streams the data to it and we're ready to go So let's superimpose a view of the unit of the DVADR so we can see how it's reflected in the sim. There's now a few extra minutes of footage added on just to give some detail around its construction. So the real question is, how do we take something like this, which is just a basic plastic enclosure box, and turn it into something like this? So the first option is to use the existing lid and to cut holes into it, mount your toggles through it and your LEDs and then just stick some labels on. And then when you finish preparing that, click straight back on and it's all done. Or it could be that you disregard that and either put some kind of printed image on top or maybe a piece of acrylic which is uh, engraved and, and, and cut. So here's the fascia I've created out of the usual 3mm spray painted acrylic. And this is uh, some of the waste material which I've used to create semicircles which they'll basically become the toggle protectors. 
Definitely seemed like a good idea to just use this out of the waste material. And this bit here would just, through the screw holes that you can see, uh, sit underneath that semicircle and be screwed from above downwards just to hold that, that semicircle in place. So we're now at the end of the first stage where we have the completed enclosure. In this case, I've uh, replaced the lid. All of the wires will be output through a cable and I want that to uh, be, be secured via a cable gland. So I've just drilled a hole here, which will be to the size of that cable gland. So I'm still sticking with the tried and tested 12 volt LEDs, which in this, this case I'm just testing with a, a nine volt circuit, but ultimately it will uh, come in off the mains and then run at 12 volts. As I start to wire this up, I just run a couple of tests and check that it's talking okay to the sim. That everything seems to be working. So let's have a look at that now. Now that LED that you can see there is bright enough for what we need here because we're looking at it directly. But that same LED just wouldn't work as uh, an indicator light if it was sort of sitting behind some text it needed to illuminate. Um, for those kind of things we would need something brighter. But we can get away with this here. This is the completed fascia, all wired up and tested. Now let's just have a close look at it. Quite pleased with my first attempt at the toggle protectors there, having those definitely makes it far more in keeping with what you see and you're looking at within the sim. Now let's take a moment to look at the rear of the fascia. And you can see there how the one strip of acrylic is held in place with the screw and the nut um, and that holds that, that toggle protector. And we have a simple wiring arrangement uh, using a shared ground. As we now clip it all together, we can see the wires as they all feed into the cable. And now that is secured by the cable gland. Yeah, it was a, a nice unit to put together, this was, um, compared to the radio cluster that took a good few months to do. This one's just a, a weekend job. With this unit being located above the emergency wheel brake, I'm going to therefore include it as part of the left console. It's the left console that's my main focus now. I'm just trying to complete every single panel for that console and then I can focus on actually building the console to to house them. The other panels I'm working on to complete the left console are the auxiliary lighting, SAS, IFF, intercom, uh, stall volume, antenna. So there are quite a few of the panels I'm trying to put together at the minute but it'll be really great to get these done. Thanks for watching.